how do we know this is really the Port Nicholson we're working on? Well, this summer, Greg, of course, we've done quite a bit of ROV footage uh, down around the wreck. Um, there are many identifying features that, that you could, uh, you know, show, you know, like the boom stands, type of anchor, shape of the ship, length of the ship, all of these features, you know, where these hose pipes are, number of porthole windows, which we've all seen. But what I want to show you in this video is right here we get the name of the ship, Port Nicholson. These are welded letters onto the hull, and they're still visible um, when the ROV went over them. Uh, they're, they're kind of difficult to see, but hopefully in the video you'll be able to, we've outlined them and hopefully you'll be able to see. So just let me play that out for you and uh, so you can see for yourself. But I have no doubts in my mind that we're working the right wreck. And here we go. You'll see the ROV, uh, you know, when it first comes on, you'll see it uh, right above some porthole windows. And as I said, the, the, the video is very difficult to see, but these letters are there. And feel free to, you know, pause and stop, and you'll be able to see them for yourself. Well, what we'll do is put a link of the entire video of the ROV flight of that day right. so that people can look at it and see the lettering. It'll look better than the way this is set up, but this is a good way uh, to show people that it is there. Exactly. They, you know, we've prepared that video for you also. I mean, the section of the ROV, you know, tr you know going traversing the hull with the lettering, it's about 12 and a half minutes. So, uh, like you said, if you just put that in another link, they can watch the whole thing right for themselves. And it's actually easier to see um, as the ROV is moving over it. You'll be able to see the shadows. Right. Well, it, it does take a little bit to notice it, but uh, you, know, you can see it. Right. And it does say the Port Nicholson on the on the hull. Yes. Every every letter of the Nicholson is is there. There's no like I said. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, this seals the deal. The lettering, but even without the lettering. I'm very confident it was the ship before I found the lettering. Um, there, every feature of the ship matches the historical photos, you know, including you know where she sank, right. uh, the torpedo hole locations, all of it. I mean, we are on the Port Nicholson. All right, there's no question in our mind on that. And we'll go through a little bit more of this. Yeah, yeah we got the S coming up. So there's no chance that there's another Nicholson out there. No, I've looked it up. No, there, there is another Port Nicholson, but it was uh, in World War One, and and uh, and she's over in England. She's long gone now too. But this one was uh, the one that was built when it was up traveling around World War Two. She built in 1917, and there was actually a third Port Nicholson uh, in the 60s, which has now been scrapped and salvaged. I think as a 73 or 74. Now, I'm going to pause it right there. I wanted to talk to you, I put this in the video too. I've got some documents that, I've, that I pulled off of the National Archives in the UK. Uh, just three documents and what was going on, why was there platinum on the Port Nicholson? And I wanted to explain that a little bit. Uh, Lend lease was happening. Uh, the United States demanded gold or platinum to be shipped to them uh, for all of the stuff that was being sent over to Russia. Now, Russia and the Lend-Lease, yes, they did get their military stores, ammunition tanks, whatnot, for free to be paid at a later date. However, uh, sugar, coffee, foodstuffs, that had to be paid for upon the convoy's arrival. So they were shipping them back. And what these documents uh, uh, say is, is that financial agreement between the U.S., U.K., and Russia, and also the, uh, you know, what they demanded from them. Uh, the first document is just saying where it's coming from, the War Cabinet, most secret, uh, and it's a report of fulfillment of the Moscow Protocol up until June 42. And right up in this paragraph, read it in detail for yourself later, but one of the agreements was or by delivery of platinum. That's why there was platinum on the Port Nicholson. Uh, the third document coming up is a manifest of all return cargoes, what was being, what had been asked for, what was actually shipped on return cargoes from the USSR and one of the very exciting things that I found in this document we really put it up is about halfway down the list right here platinum is on it so again uh, they were shipping it over to the UK then UK would transfer it into ships and bring it over to uh, the US for their payments uh, this is a little transition photo of the, of the Port Nicholson wreck site and uh, Next part of this. Now, 1986, the HMS Edinburgh. She was a 10,000 ton cruiser. 
uh, that was over Murmansk, Russia, and was actually loaded with 465 bars of gold uh, six weeks prior to the Port Nicholson sinking. She was loaded up. Uh, she was then attacked on the way home. In fact, it, it, it appears that she was actually targeted by the German Navy and uh, aircraft, submarines, because they knew it was on board. 1986, uh, a fella un, uh, you know, discovered this wreck and they recovered all 465 bars of gold, worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, been in contact with this fella because I wanted to know, since this ship sank six weeks before the Port Nicholson, I wanted to know the box, the type of box that was on board the Edinburgh, because I think that the same box is going to be on the Port Nicholson. I had him uh, actually uh, send me a picture of one of the boxes recovered on the Edinburgh uh, from that wreck so that I could compare it to ROV footage that we have on the Port Nicholson, hoping to see some similarities. And here's some pictures of that. And did they kind of match up? They're very, very similar. Uh, the smaller crates are. I've got larger crates, uh, which I'll be showing you in video here in a minute. This is just an emblem of this box to describe what it is. That's actually the box. This looks really large, but note the coffee cup. It's only about seven inches tall. It's an ammo, a Soviet ammo box. There were five bars of gold in that, and it weighed quite a bit. And they actually, all the video I've seen of the boxes down there are almost identical. Yeah, there's a. Uh, I, I just really think that this, it's going to be the same box. Here's, here's some video footage of the crates. Um, this first area uh, is a large pile of crates. They're about four feet long, but what's unique about them is they're over 200 pounds. I can't move them with the ROV, uh, but they're only four feet long, so that tells me that something, you know, of course, extremely heavy and dense, but you can see, we see these all over the stern of the wreck. Uh, we did attempt to, to try to recover some of those this, uh, this summer, uh, but it was very, very difficult because of the constraints of the ROV's design. Uh, but I did want to show you some of, the, some of the crates that we have here. These are the longer uh, crates that we have seen down there. Uh, the next piece of video, which I'll show you after this one ends, uh, is a smaller crate, uh, which we'll get, get into in a minute. But I just want you to understand that uh, this crate, it's only four feet long, it's a little over a foot wide, and you cannot move it with the ROV. Something is really high dense metal inside, and it's not ammunition. I could move ammunition. This is this is over 200 pounds. And we've seen 30 different boxes on the bottom, roughly. Roughly, I got I got them on video, video about 30 of them. I got more on sonar. You know, as you know, uh, the visibility down here is, can only be you know four to six feet on a good day. Right. Uh, sometimes it's lower than that if the current's really kicked up. But to, to bring one of these servers with the ROV we have now, uh, I just don't think she has the power to do it, but we'll, we'll figure something out. This is the small crate I'm talking about. This guy here is only about 18 inches across. So, you know, it's only like that big. This one here also has a significant amount of weight. I could move this one, but only under full power. Uh, okay, for people looking at that, how would they know that's a crate? Okay, you get a looking here but you can see a little line going across here yeah that's a wooden lid when the box flips over you clearly see the wood okay as you get closer uh, this the high definition isn't that good here but there's actually wooden slats and this is also located on a in an area a target area that we call the trapezoid area uh, an area that we've been trying to get to all summer long uh, but again due to constraints of the ROB design and high currents that are in that area uh, in our anchorage system, it's making it very, very difficult to get to this area. Literally, to get to this spot, I was only allowed to stay in it for about 20 minutes before the ship broke anchor and we were dragged away. But we did get 20 minutes with this box to get to explore it. Uh, then there, I mean, several, several attempts to get back to it throughout the summer and even into the fall, uh, and we were unsuccessful to get to this particular spot. And uh, but it's. The 18-inch box weighing over 100 pounds. I don't know what's in it yet, but I'll, I'll find out. But I, I think it, this is as closest to the uh, Soviet ammo boxes that the Edinburgh uh, brought up, as I found so far. You can see the ROV uh, maneuvering to uh, flip the box over. You can actually see wood broke away when we entered in underneath it, and this corner is also broken off. Now, watching the ROV will pop up all of a sudden. That indicates the weight. The ROV right now is nosed over about 45 degrees due to its weight. And then she's uh, at full power settings, about four and a half horsepower. And we almost
almost got her over right there, and pow, she pops off. There's an indication of how much power is being used just to flip that over. And the weight of the box, because otherwise right. it should have flipped over. The box is only about 18 inches long. That's a lot of weight for a small box. You know, like the Edinburgh wreck, they had uh, five 26 pound ingots in theirs. Coming from the same warehouse, the same city, now you've six been, weeks later. You've been emailing back and forth with this guy over in, uh, I think he's in Scotland? Yeah, his name's Rick Warden. He's the one that headed up the project to, on the Edinburgh project. And he was pretty excited about what we've been telling him. Oh, he wants to, he wants us to tell him everything we can. Uh, uh, here you can really see the box. Yes, yes, you can definitely see the wood edges of the box here. Uh, the boxes, the Soviet ammo boxes are made out of rough pine. Uh, this is very similar in width, you know, the actual board width. And uh, inside the box is a very hard material. Uh, the Edinburgh Rex gold ingots were stored in sawdust. It's very likely because this box has been surrounded by other metal that's been decaying that that adhered to the sawdust and uh, became a very hard material. Uh, the trapezoid area where, the, where we found these is some sonar targets of some tra ingots profiles, which we talked about a while back. Uh, another set here of ingots that may possibly be out of the boxes. But the crates that I just showed you, they're all in this trapezoid area. The reason I call it a trapezoid area, because this is an ingot that we found, and it's for trapezoidal in shape. There's three photos that will transition here, and you can see its shape if you look close enough. The problem with this area, we're having enormous difficulty getting the ship over it because of the currents. And then the ROV, when it is within 150 feet of it, I can't overpower the currents to get up into that area long enough and stay there to be able to work the site. This particular footage, uh, the, the cargo uh, bay tube, this is actually the ROV inside the ship. It was not designed to be inside a ship, but we did it. It's inside the ship, but what I wanted to show you here is there's quite a bit of damage in cargo bay too. Uh, we need to be able to go deeper into the ship to be able to get to where they were stored. If we can't find them outside, they're going to be where they originally were. Uh, okay, let me ask you this. Uh, we've been out there many times and we've been in there. Our ROV will not remove that debris. No, this this right here is the main deck and uh, we'll spin back, back around 180 degrees behind the ROV. You're going to see a lot of other metals such as this piping. Uh, probably for, for refrigeration of that hold, uh, but we explored that whole bay about 25 feet in and it is blocked in Cargo Bay 2. It's blocked. So, uh, the only way to get by that debris is to move it. Uh, the design of our current ROV is inspection class. It's designed to look at stuff. We do overuse it for other things, but moving uh, objects that could be pinned in or 100 pounds, she's just not going to have the power enough to be able to do that stuff. And on top of that, it's only got one manipulator. And you kind of need two to be able to balance and move stuff just like you would with your own hands. You can see some of the more and more of the debris. Uh, there is Cargo Bay 1. We've also been in Cargo Bay 1. There is not significant damage. Uh, but we're talking about sending an ROV 75 feet into a ship, hanging a right, and going down 125 foot corridor of Cargo Bay. You're asking a lot to do there. Um, one other way to do it, if this is impassable, I don't. I think we could get by this by moving stuff around, but if it isn't passable, we would have to cut through the bottom of the hull because she lays on her side. Once it's determined where the platinum sits, cut a hole open and go in from that way. Our ROV right now doesn't have that capability and it can't even be changed to do so. Um, this, the rest of this footage here, Greg, is just some cool stuff that we found. Uh, one is going to be a boiler brick, uh, which was a it showed up on sonar as an ingot profile and we went after it and it ended up being a boiler brick but I wanted to show it to you because it was pretty cool and it gave us good practice bringing it up and another one it's just a couple of pictures but it's the it's the ship's compass which is a, a treasure in itself uh, but they have been recovered to death but you, you, when I first saw this right here this this rectangular shot right here I mean uh, I know I was excited I'm sure everybody else was too there for a bit uh, however, once uh, we grabbed a hole of it um, and the ROV was able to tell us its weight, uh, we knew that it wasn't heavy enough and that we had something else that was rectangular in shape because right. it ended up only being about 13 or 14 pounds. Okay, so we, we, we've been out there, we've proven the ship is the Port Nicholson. Yes. We've seen uh, 
30 plus boxes of crates laying on, on the ocean floor. Uh, our, our ROV cannot pick up those crates and move them around so we can't get them to the surface and, and uh, so what we need to do is be able to do that. Now what do you think we need to make this happen? Two, two things are going to happen. One, I'm going to need a more capable ROV, hands down. Right, something that has a lot more power. It's going to need a lot more power. Uh, you know, we've managed with what we've had this whole time, uh, but again, it's an inspection class ROV. We put a manipulator on it, and, it, and it, without that manipulator, we wouldn't have the ROV right now. So it was a good purchase because it helped me untangle in some really difficult spots uh, where we've brought it. Uh, however, what's next? We've eliminated all kinds of search areas around the ship, so the next place is inside the ship or definitely up in that trapezoid area. To get to the trapezoid area, I need more power to fight the current. The second thing I'm going to need is I need the Sea Hunter to be able to position me in exactly where I need to be, uh, which, is, which, is a, which is a game in itself. Sometimes it takes us more than three hours to anchor the ship up so the ROV can do its flight. And, and sometimes it's very difficult to match up to a slack tied window and we'll miss it which puts us in a high current uh, scenario. Um, to get the Sea Hunter to be able to do that, there's, a, you know, there's, there's high end ways of doing it. A simple way of doing it is uh, adding another anchor to the site so we can tie in the stern a little bit better. Uh, and two, go with instead of anchor chain on the bow, rig it to one of the 100 ton pole masters with cable. Uh, would reduce our production times from two and a half hours of setting an anchor to you know 20 minutes. Right, okay, so we've got the anchor in figured out. What we need to do is get an ROV capable of do, picking up right. the product. If you can get me in the spot and I send down the ROV we've been sending down, all I'm going to be able to get you is cool pictures. Yep. That's all I've been able to do for you so far. I've been hoping to get you that picture of the Platinum and there it is sitting right out there in the dirt, but we've eliminated a lot of areas. Um, we cannot reach the trapezoid area. Uh, it's been tried. There's several, several attempts. So I need to get the trapezoid area and I also need to get inside the ship and uh, my, my ways are being blocked. And uh, we're, we're, what I'm telling you is that we need to move to the next phase and that's a bigger ROV. Right. There's just not a lot of ways around it. Right, we all agree on it. We've all been out there. We've all worked on this site for a long time and we all know what we need to do to make it happen. And we wish we could have done it with the equipment we've had, but we haven't been able to. And we've tried and tried and we're not giving up on this thing. So. We will get us a, a better ROV and we will get this product. And I think everybody's agreeable on that. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. All right, well, let's get it done. No problem.